Imagine this. You're at a fancy dinner in Paris. The waiter brings out a glistening plate of raw salmon tartare and you're feeling très chic. But lurking beneath the uh, elegant presentation might be a microscopic hitchhiker with a one-way ticket to your intestines. Welcome to Knowing is Winning and the world of parasites. Nature's freeloaders, the original squatters who don't pay rent and definitely don't clean up after themselves. And maybe we will find out together why people who regularly deworm their cats and dogs never consider doing the same for themselves. Well, parasites come in three main flavors. Protozoa, which are tiny single cell uh, party crushers. Um, Helminths, worms that range from a spaghetti size to a, oh my god, what is that? And ectoparasites, the uh, skin crawling kind like uh, lice and uh, ticks. They are not just gross, they are global. Over 1.4 billion people are infected with helminths alone and protozoa like Glardia and Cryptospardium are responsible for millions of cases of diarrhea, malnutrition and general misery every year. Now, how do these little creeps get into us? Mostly through food and water. Undercooked pork is a classic culprit, often carrying trachinella or tenea, the pork tapeworm. Raw beef can harbor its own tapeworms and freshwater fish like carp or perch might be swimming with flukes like clonorchis or optisterchias. Sushi and sashimi, if not properly frozen, can deliver anisakis worms straight to your gut. Even raw veggies can be risky if, they've been, if they have been washed in contaminated water or grown in parasite-laden soil. And it's not just exotic dishes. Raw aquatic plants like uh, watercress or even your favorite uh, ceviche can be Trojan horses for parasites. Basically, if it is raw and came from nature, there is a chance it's hosting a microscopic rave. And um, last but not least, if you have pets, you also have their perennial companions. Think how often you have dewormed your cat or dog and uh, how many times have you undergone the same treatment uh, for yourself? Are you treating yourself worse than your pets? Uh, you know, something to think about. Anyway, now, how can you detect um, the parasites by yourself without going to a specialist? Parasites are sneaky little freeloaders and the symptoms they cause can range from mildly annoying to downright bizarre. The most obvious signs of a parasitic infection often mimic other conditions, which is why they are frequently misdiagnosed or overlooked. But once you know what to look for, the clues start to add up. One of the biggest red flags is digestive distress. If you are dealing with unexplained bloating, gas, diarrhea, constipation or nausea, especially if it comes and goes unpredictably, Parasites might be the culprits. They love to set up camp in your gastrointestinal tract, triggering immune responses that mess with your digestion. Another telltale sign is chronic fatigue. Parasites feed off your nutrients, leaving you feeling drained even after a full night's sleep. Some, like Giardia, can interfere with your body's ability to absorb iron and B12 leading to anemia and exhaustion. Skin issues are also common. Think rashes, hives, eczema, acne, or unexplained itching, especially around the mouth, nose, or anus. These symptoms can be caused by the body's inflammatory response uh, to the parasite or by toxins they release. Then there is the weird stuff. Teeth grinding at night, drooling during sleep, strong craving for sugar or processed foods, and even mood changes like anxiety, irritability, or depression. 
Some parasites can affect neurotransmitter levels, which might explain the emotional roller coaster. Other signs uh, may include uh, unexplained weight loss or constant hunger, um, joint and muscle pain, recurring yeast infections, bleeding gums, memory problems or brain fog, sexual dysfunction, and uh, food allergies or sensitivities. If you're experiencing a combination of these symptoms and they're not responding to typical treatments, it might be time to consider parasites as the hidden cause. Diagnostic tests like um, stool analysis, blood tests, or more advanced methods like PCR and uh, GI map can help confirm the presence of these unwelcome guests in your uh, body. So what is the defense strategy? In France and across the EU, there is a regulation that mandates freezing seafood intended for raw consumption to kill parasites. The magic numbers are minus 20 degrees centigrade for 24 hours or 35 degrees centigrade for 15 hours. That's cold enough to make even the hardiest worm tap out. For freshwater fish, which can carry more resistant trimodos, the rules are even stricter. Some need to be frozen at minus 10 degrees centigrade for five days or cooked at 70 degrees centigrade or for 30 minutes. Sushi grade fish isn't just a marketing term. It is a promise that the fish has been deep frozen to make it parasite safe. But um, let's say you're already uh, got a parasite. Maybe um, you've been uh, feeling bloated, uh, gassy, or just, um, or just off. Maybe you saw something wiggly in the toilet and scream, screamed like a horror movie extra. What now? Enter the world of deworming. The pharmaceutical coverly includes drugs like albodonzale, mebodonzale, invermectin, and praziquatel. These aren't just average painkillers. They are precision-guided parasite assassins. Albodonzole messes with the worm's ability to absorb nutrients, essentially starving it to death. On the other hand, Invermectin paralyzes the parasite's muscles, making it lose its grip and get flushed out. Praziquantel floods the worm with calcium ions, causing spasms and eventual death. It is like a rave gone wrong inside the uh, parasite's body. But parasites are crafty. They evolve resistance, especially when drugs are overused or misused. That's why researchers are constantly developing new treatments and combination therapies to stay ahead of the curve. And yes, there is a whole underground scene of parasite cleanses involving herbs like uh, barberine, um, golden seal or um, Oregon grape. Some people swear by them, but the science is still, you know, kind of catching up, if you would. Um, now, if you are going to the, uh, the herbal route, talk to a doctor first. Some of these remedies can mess with your meds um, or your liver. Now, let's talk about diagnostics. Gone are the days of squinting at stool samples under a microscope. Today, we've got molecular techniques like PCR and AI-powered platforms that can detect parasites with spooky accuracy. Non-invasive techniques for detecting parasites in humans are generally gaining traction, especially among those seeking alternatives to traditional stool tests or blood draws. One of the um, most talked about methods is um, bioresonance therapy, which depending on who you ask, is either a revolutionary diagnostic tool or a pseudoscientific rabbit hole. Bioresonance is based on the idea that every organism, including parasites, emits electromagnetic frequencies. Practitioners claim that by measuring these frequencies and identifying disruptions or anomalies, they can detect the presence of parasites. 
Devices used in bioresonance therapy uh, read these frequencies and then emit corrective signals to neutralize the parasites or restore balance to the body. While users generally report positive experiences, mainstream science um, remains uh, skeptical. On the more scientifically grounded side, nanobiosensors are emerging as a promising non-invasive diagnostic tool. These tiny devices use nanomaterials like gold nanoparticles, quantum dots, and carbon nanotubes to detect parasite biomarkers such as DNA, antigens, or excretory secretory products. They offer high sensitivity and specificity and can even be designed to detect multiple parasites at the same time. For example, nanobiosensors have been used to detect plasmodium, you know, malaria, Leishmania, Echinoscosus, Schidosoma, and Taenia with impressive accuracy. Some systems use antibodies or aptamers attached to nanoparticles to bind specific parasite markers, making them ideal for early detection. Another cutting-edge method is near-infrared spectrography, NIRS, combined with machine learning. This technology has been used to detect malaria parasites non-invasively by scanning body areas like the feet or ears. The spectral data is analyzed using algorithms to identify parasite presence with high accuracy, up to 96% sensitivity in some studies. There is also um, growing interest in using non-invasive biological samples like saliva, urine, um, hair, and even uh, conjunctival swabs to detect parasite infections. These samples can contain parasite DNA, antigens, or antibodies, and are especially useful for diseases like um, Leishmaniasis and uh, Chagas disease. And here is a twist. Some parasites might actually be useful. Researchers are exploring how certain helminths could help treat autoimmune diseases by modulating the immune system. It's like hiring a burglar to fix your alarm system. Counterintuitive, but potentially brilliant. Still, prevention is the name of the game. Wash your hands like you're prepping for surgery. Cook your meat thoroughly. Freeze your fish if you're going raw. Avoid untreated water, especially when traveling, and maybe skip the drunken crab marinated in wine and pepper, unless you're sure it's been parasite-proofed. So next time you're at a trendy restaurant eyeing that raw oyster or uh, beef carpaccio, remember, parasites don't care how fancy your plate looks. They're equal opportunity invaders, but with a little knowledge, a dash of caution, and maybe a freezer, that could double as a cryogenic chamber. You can enjoy your food without hosting an unwanted guest. And this, this was Knowing is Winning. Thank you very much for watching.